Answer This has become an awesome AI tool for academia and research, but there's so much that they're offering that it can get a little bit confusing. So today we're gonna to go over the workflows that I think make academia and research much easier. And as you can see, it's not exactly easy, but that's what this video is all about. All right then, here we go. I've reviewed Answer This on this channel before and you told me it was far too expensive. So for you, I've spoken to the CEO and the co-founder and I have said, give me a deal. So down below is a uh, deal which offers you 25% off the monthly fee, which is the highest discount they've ever given. So hopefully then you will feel more confident that it's aligned with the pricing of other AI tools. So let's get into it. So this is what it is, a question to final publication, all in one research assistant. This tool has been trying to replace every single workflow that you need as an academic to get from idea, find the literature to publication. Have they achieved it? Well, I think they're getting closer, but it's not quite there yet in terms of this full offering, but there are some awesome tools that you should know about. So the first thing you need to do when you're approaching a tool like this is work out what you actually need to do. And there are two broad things that I think this tool offers, and we'll talk about that now. So the first thing is a simple inquiry. If you have a question, you can use their quick uh, question and answer service, which, uh, gives you a research paper filter to come up with a simple answer. So that's really good if you're just sort of like, you know, in a normal research environment, something pops into your mind, you're like, oh, I wonder what the literature says about that. They offer that and it is great. But they then also got this other offering, which is the full review. And as you can see down here, it gets really convoluted in all of the things you can do, but we'll be going through the workflows that allow you to understand exactly what to do, where to go, what button to push, because they offer so much that it can get a little bit mm, confusing. So. So here is a mud map and we'll go through one at a time. But first of all, let's have a look at this, the inquiry. So the first thing you need to do is come up with a question. And that's pretty easy throughout your research life. All these questions are popping into your mind and you can go here and use their quick Q and answer function and their research paper filter to end up with this response. Normally there's a text response and then a table response. And this is what they are now calling their canvas. So let's go and have a look at that. So. This is the quick Q&A and in the simple response, you can ask papers, you can ask the internet, you can ask your library if you have one, if you've uploaded papers into this, um, and also you can attach files. But this filter is really where the power lies because here you can see, you can look at number of citations that you want, the journal quality, the publication types, and also a load of other things, um, including publication date, their start date, end date, and that's really good for getting recent papers. But if you put that in, so I did this with a really simple question, how do exfoliants enhance skin texture? Now, when you first get it, it looks like this. It's columns, one side and then the other side, but I actually don't like that view. I like this one where you can see it's just like, here's the information that you need and it's completely referenced. If you click on this, it takes you down to the reference. And then as you scroll down, you get the table. So it's much more aligned with other research tools that I've seen um, and I like the fact that that, you know, it gives you the information. And then if you want, you can go down and actually explore and interrogate the references a little bit better. So overall, this is sort of like the very simple way that you can use answer this, but it gets so much more powerful and they tease it down here and you can do all of these things, but we'll save this for, I think, which is the better version of this search, which is the full literature search. And then this becomes really powerful. And I think we'll save that. So that's the first one. That's this one, which is the inquiry, or let's put that full screen so I'm professional. This is the question. You ask a quick question, you get your research filter paper, great. And the next thing is this, this mud map that we'll go through. So you can see how you can actually go from prompt to a load of different outcomes, and ultimately a little bit of a document that you can use for to first draft a literature review or something like a peer reviewed paper introduction. Let's give it a go. Okay, then besides this quick Q&A, when you first sort of like log in, it is default this full review. And this is where I think the majority of people will probably go when they're first using this. And 
It is so powerful, but you have to know what you want going into it because it can get confusing about exactly what the outputs um, allow you to do. So down here, you can ask any research question and you've got the same filters as before. But when you go to filter this time, you can see you've got a little bit more. This is the literature review settings, the number of main sections you want, the sub points per section, the topics to cover if you've got something you want to sort of like specifically discuss in this literature review. And then you've got here, Minimum citations, I actually like whacking that up to like 20 because if I'm doing a literature review, I want it to try its hardest. And then you've got journal journal quality, I often put that just at Q2. And then you've got all of the normal stuff that we had before. Once you go uh, and click that, it goes away and it does its sort of like stuff. And then after about, I don't know, uh, five minutes, it produced something like this. And you can see it is in depth. Once again, I've gone into this single column layout and it is big, it's got tables, it's got Got references, you can see that it's found so many things. If we keep, keep scrolling, you can see this is actually a pretty detailed first draft of a literature review and it sort of uh, makes complete sense of the headings they've chosen and that sort of stuff. And this is the citation it's chosen. So 14. Okay, I don't mind 14, but you can see down here that, uh, yeah, here are all of the citations that it's found. It's page one of 75. So there's uh, 372 papers that it's found, but in the literature review, it's just included 14. So don't be put off by the 14 number. It's actually found all of this stuff. And now this is where the true power of Answer This lies, because on this, what they're calling the canvas, you can do a range of different things. So let's go over here and have a look to see how this breaks down. So this is where we're up to at the moment. We've put in a prompt, we've asked for a full review, we've got the, these literature review settings, Settings, and then we end up with this canvas. The first thing you can do, and probably the most obvious one, is you can ask follow-up questions. So all you have to do is go over to the follow-up questions, and you can see here, ask follow-up questions. So you could ask for, uh, what are the research gaps? And it on this canvas, it will allow you underneath that to then get an answer to this question. What are the research gaps? And it will go or find resources and give you that stuff. So that's a pretty simple way of finding out, uh, you know, a little bit more detail about the things that you want to find out about given your search. Now, this is where a new feature comes in, which is this notebook. So notebook essentially allows you to create a document and edit a document. One of the most annoying things about all of these is that, you know, you end up with all of this text and you're like, what do I do with all of this text? Well, if it's useful to you, you click up here to notebook and then you've got open default notebook or add to default notebook. I'll click here and then we get access to um, the notebook panel. And this notebook panel is kind of like Google Docs where you can, uh, you know, format it, you can highlight it, and you can do all of these things. You can reformat and you can export. So there's a lot of things you can do in here. And also, as you go along, you can add to this notebook. Um, it is uh, you know, fully customizable, I mean, editable, and you can, um, yeah, export this into wherever you like. And it does save it in my library, which is over here. It does save it as a notebook. So you can see here are all of the notebooks that uh, I've generated. We've also got papers, canvas. So each canvas is each question, essentially, where you start. But the notebook is where all of the writing happens. That's what I want you to know about that. So we'll go back uh, to to our uh, canvas. So we gotta go library to canvas. And then where were we there? This was it. And you can see that this is where we ended up. But this is a canvas, we've asked a follow up question. And uh, now we can choose to do a range of different things. Let's head over to our mud map and it'll hopefully make more sense to you. Because once we've done the notebook thing, and we've generated a notebook and maybe saved some notes, there are a number of things we can do. And that's this panel. So this panel is where a load of things can happen. You can chat with the papers that you've just found in the table, you can create a new table, which is just a new table of the literature you found. And we'll talk about how to use that. You've also got bibliometric analysis, citation map, new uh, search new papers and agents. Well, not quite yet. We'll see about that in a minute. But ultimately, these are all of the things you can do on this 
this initial canvas and it doesn't sort of like navigate away it just gets added underneath the results so first thing first let's have a look we want to chat with papers great so we need to select some papers and then we can start a conversation and we get this so let's head over and do that now when we go down here, you can see if I select a couple of these papers, all we have to do then is click on this tab at the bottom, bonk, and you get chat with papers. I've selected two papers. If we want more, um, let's say we want to filter it. So I want to filter, I want a start date, let's say only from 2020. So let's have a look. We'll go to 2020. Come on click January 2020. Okay, good. Apply. And then we'll get all of the papers that are from 2020. All and how many of that 11 selected great and then we'll go to down here chat with papers and then another interface will pop up so if you're in the early stages of a research career or a project and you just want to find out what's going on in the world of your research field then this is what it is okay remove papers without pdf but you can put in a lib key which gives you access to the full papers through your library but now it will put in all of the papers and we can start a conversation and ask stuff what are the main findings summarize uh, what are the limitations of this research so you can see that there's a load of things that it's put in to this and we can ask any question a really nice backwards and forwards if you want to chat with papers and this workflow is really great if you are in that exploratory early phase then we can also do something else from this canvas we've generated. We can create a new table. So this table looks like this, and it's very similar to the table that's been sort of spat out as part of the initial search, but we can use that uh, table to investigate something a little bit more, uh, you know, related to, let's have a look, how do I go back to that? Okay, because it's canvas, it spills out at the bottom. So if you wanna go back to your initial table, you gotta scroll up to the top to where that is, which is here. And you can see that I've got that 11 selected and now I can go create a new table which will only be these, uh, these references that I've selected. And the great thing about these tables is that, there we are, now we've got a new table at the bottom of the canvas that we've generated. And the great thing about this is each row is a paper and now we can add columns. So we want research gaps for each thing and you can even put in your own... Um, Bonk. You can even put in your own uh, uh, prompt here to say what kind of data you want to extract from each individual paper. So something like we see in size space and consensus, uh, this can now be done here, which is really great. So you can see research gaps, research gaps, research gaps, all of this stuff can be found out by adding a column and you can put in your own things. So here abstract, um, let's have a look. We want to get rid of that. We want to put in future work. Why not? So we want to know for each paper what the future work was. That is something that maybe we can use to springboard our own stuff, whatever. Yeah, you can do that if you want. There we are. Easy peasy. So that is the create a new table function. That's great. A great way to filter through the stuff that your initial search found and to add columns uh, to look for specific information. There we go. Now we've got bibliometric analysis. This is something I've not seen in any other research tool to date. So if you really want to get a grasp, a visual grasp that is, of all of the stuff that's offered um, up from this search, then you can go here and it will do a bibliometric analysis. So let's go have a quick look at that. So the bibliometric analysis I've done before, um, it's in my canvas, here it is. So I wanted to know, uh, you know, publications from 2022. So it created only those two. But if you select much more, let's have a look let's go all the way to the top where I wanted that information we need to go to this view scroll down you can see that it's got so many things that it can get confusing about exactly like what you're doing and how so here I've got 11 selected I want a bibliometric analysis from those 11 papers it will get added to the bottom of this canvas 
And here we are. So you can see publications by year. You can see this has been a great year for this uh, research field. We get the citations by year. So we'd expect, you know, 2022 was good. We expect them to be more early on. Obviously 2025, only six, come on now. And then uh, combined publications, citations, and then we got citation impact, word clouds, top terms, top authors. So if you really want to find out the uh, lay of the land, so to speak, of a particular research field, then doing something like this is really great, really great early on, or if you do well, do want to kind of like inject a little bit more um, energy, is that right term, into a research field that you've been working in, you can go in and be like, have I missed anything? Have I missed any keywords? Have I missed any authors? Have I missed any top terms that I should be looking at? It's just a nice sense check, I think. And that is the uh, bibliometric analysis, which you can add to this canvas. Then you've also got a number of other things. We'll skip over citation map because we'll talk about that in a minute. It, but we've also got search new papers. Now, this is a little bit sneaky, I think, because search new papers really, let's go full screen so you know that I'm a professional, really is just this generated again. But instead of selecting papers, you now just select it with a prompt. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. All right, then let's go back over here. Let's go back up to our papers. Oh, no, we don't need to do that anymore because we can go to search new papers. This pops up. And then you can ask for something else. It's not, it doesn't even need to be related to what you've just done on that canvas. Um, so here we are. What are the latest treatments for Alzheimer's disease? Let's search that. It will search from papers and then it will add it to the bottom of the canvas. So if you are wanting to do something a little bit outside of the uh, first response, you can then get that. And uh, you can see it's put it down the bottom here. You can do everything that you can do with tables in this new prompt. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There we are. That's where we're at with that. And then also we've got agents. Uh, have we? No, coming soon. That's a bit cheeky, isn't it? So they've put uh, agents here. And if you click on it, it just says coming soon. So we will be keeping an eye out for that. And one thing I do want to say is that Remember this little chap all the way up here from ages ago in the video? Well, you can actually sort of send stuff to the notebook to be included. So if you find out something here, if you find something here, if you find something here, you can send it to a notebook and then you can include it in the thing you are writing in the output. So there are all of the things you can do with Answer This. It is complicated, it's a little bit convoluted, but knowing these outcomes, I think will help you understand exactly what you, yeah, I'll go full screen again, so I look professional. Um, you, knowing what you can do from one single prompt and you can kind of like, you know, uh, what do you call it, dovetail it out into a range of different things, I think is where the power lies, but it can be confusing about what exactly you can do and when and where and with what. So this is what you can do. If you head back over to answer this, you can see that there's a ton of other things you can do as well. You can create a citation map. So from a simple paper, you can create a citation map. Let's say, uh, let's go back over here and have a look at this one. And then we set this as origin and you get to um, interact with the graph once it's finally uploaded. But there we are, there's all of the papers that it found that are interacting with the origin paper that I've put in. You can also change here um, from this output, you can look for the most cited papers and it only changes this table down here. You can look for the most connected papers and you can also look for the top contributing authors. Lovely jubbly. You've also got diagrams. Diagrams, you can create mind maps, user journeys. We won't go into this right now because I'm waiting for this, the graphs to happen. I think that's where the most power will be with this, but uh, you can see that you've got all sorts of uh, different graphs that you can put in from a single prompt and you've got agents. You've got naturalizer, essay writer, gap finder, AI paraphraser, a load of different things. Go check out my other video on Answer This where I go through this uh, agent section in a lot more detail. But that is all of the stuff you need to know about Answer This at the moment. It's powerful. Um, let me know what you think. If you like this video about AI workflows, go check out this one where I talk about writing a peer-reviewed paper using awesome AI tools. I think you'll love it.